Hello everyone, uh, this is going to be a brief video uh, to supplement the information in the lab manual with regards to the lab core, virtual lab, uh, the dehydration methyl cyclohexanol and the idea of JHS rules. So, um, to start with, um, molecules will undergo, alcohols will undergo an acid catalyzed dehydration. So we'll give, I'll start with this example right out of the text or in lab manual, okay? And some acid form, in this particular lab, this is going to be phosphoric acid, right? And what will happen is there will be a protonation of the Lewis uh, base. Okay. Lewis bases donate electron pairs, and we end up with this uh, intermediate species. So this will then have the electron jump with the water and behind will be left a carbocation. Right. Now, one thing that carbocations are very good at doing is rearranging. They rearrange uh, to typically form more stable carbocations, not always. Um, or they can rearrange to make equally stable carbocations. They very rarely make less stable carbocations. Okay. So uh, this is the dehydrated carbocation at this point. Now what can happen? Well, a very simple, straightforward reaction would be this. Okay. We have a plus here. Uh, we have a hydrogen here. And we have a hydrogen here. So we'll call this HA and HB. Water, which, believe it or not, acts as a base, Lewis base, electron pair donor. This would leave, this is reaction A, I guess. You would end up with something that looks like this. Plus H3O plus. All right, so acid was in. So this is effectively a acid catalyzed, right? Because we create the acid at the end, catalyzed dehydration. Okay. Another possibility would be this, where water could react with HB. And in that instance, get this product plus H3O plus. Okay. That is with no rearrangements or anything. Those are the two possibilities. Zaitsa, Russian chemist, noticed that the more highly substituted product is favored, okay? Okay, it has three chains attached, three alkyl chains attached to the double bond, so it's triply substituted. Reaction B results in a di-substituted. So Zaitsev suggests that uh, product, I guess, A would predominate. Other things can happen, all right? So that's the simplest case, just a simple dehydration. Now, let's think about the possibility of what is referred to as a one, two hydride shift, okay? So we will start here in the explanation. The idea with the one, two hydride shift Hydride, remember, is H minus or hydrogen with bonding electrons. Okay, two electrons, right? Shift. Okay, so we could get uh, a H, and again, maybe we'll call this. Uh, well, I guess this is A, or this is H B. Now, this product here again could just simply undergo a deprotonation, forming the alkene. Or what you could get 
is a hydride shift. Okay, so this would be, you don't use a red color to denote that, hydride shift. So these electrons move over here. And what that produces is the result of a 1, 2 hydride shift. is this carbocation, okay? And that, and I guess the new hydrogen is out here. Okay, I haven't drawn in all the hydrogens, but we can form that carbocation. And a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation. We could get a hydride shift where the blue hydrogen shifts, or the, the B hydrogen, or, and again, this is a one, two, hydride shift and that would produce this structure so this hydride makes its way over here and that produces this so we have the new hydrogen HB is over here now I guess I should have called this HA and I'll call this I suppose HB just so we can keep track of all the and we end up with a positive here, okay? This is a secondary carbocation shifting to a secondary carbocation. At the very least, it's energetically the same. This, these carbocations can now dehydrate, all right? So we could, again, if there's a hydrogen here or a hydrogen here or a hydrogen here, water, can cause a dehydration, okay? Now it could react there, could react here, or could react there. In any instance, the dehydration will produce possibly this structure, right? Or possibly, if it takes it off the methyl group, this structure, or possibly this structure course those are all the same the two outer ones likewise if we were to cause a deprotonation here so we could pull off uh, again I guess I'll just use black H2O could come in here or here and what that'll do is produce a double bond that looks like this or an alkene that looks like that, okay? So those are the various possibilities, right? Now, there is one other type that I'll let you in on, okay? It is called an alkyl shift. And this, okay, so alkyl shifts, right, i.e. alkane, like a methyl group or whatnot, rearrangements result in large changes. Okay, now I'm not going to give you the specific one, okay, to this lab, but I'll give you an example. Suppose we have a molecule that looks like this, okay, and we have uh, I guess we've done this, we've protonated it, we've heated it, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's protonation occurs. And actually, you know what? I'll make this a bit more elaborate. Okay, we'll do this, okay? And then we have the water has left and we end up with a positive here. And that's a primary carbocation. Okay, so uh, that is a primary carbocation, not very stable. What can happen is, much like the hydride shift, we get an alkyl shift, okay? So this is an alkyl chain that's moving. So instead of a hydrogen, alkyl shifts can happen. What happens there is now we have this, and okay, so maybe I'll call this CH3, 
just to show you that this has happened. Okay. So this whole character moves over and it produces a secondary carbocation. Okay. And that's energetically favorable. Now what can go with that? Well, if we end up with this CH3 and we end up with a plus here, we could deprotonate that hydrogen or this hydrogen, JHB. And that's going to produce uh, the A product, which would look like this. Or if we produce the B product, right? Again, this is a deprotonation. So water will act as the base. We'll come in here and that'll produce this structure. Okay? And that's a base dust product. Okay? So the guiding principle I want you to take away from this is that carbocations will rearrange to make a more stable carbocation. And that net result is these double bonds move all over the place. The double bonds can move uh, because of the hydrogen changes and then followed by a deprotonation. Or in the case of the alkyl shift, we can actually get larger carbocation uh, rearrangements. So maybe I'll give you a little bit of a hint. No, I won't. I'll leave that to you. That'll be a bonus. See if you guys can figure it out. Okay. And that's all I got for you.